All right, so research. We're real close. Uh, 27 points of research. So it's like some number of red bolts. So probably another cycle or two. We should be there. So I think, Foxy, I've heard you mention a couple of times doing um, like multiplayer for Baldur's Gate 3. Is that is that ever going to be a thing? You're down? Okay. Yep, yep. So how does that... You can do on... Yeah, I don't know if it would be a thing on stream or not. Um, but, uh, yeah. Could be fun. I don't know how that really works in terms of, like... So, I guess everyone makes their own character. Like, you make a custom character. I guess you could use one of the, like, the origin characters and like hmm. yeah I'm not sure exactly how what, what multiplayer and that looks like um, because yeah I think besides my own play <laughs> I've really I've, I've seen a little bit of um, someone else a long time well relatively speaking a long time ago um, but I've not seen any multiplayer I think you playing is the most I've seen of other people playing playing it. I did uh, load up uh, played up today and realized that if I'm gonna play that, I need to play it with a uh, with a controller. Uh, everyone has their own character and we just hop on together. It's still turn-based battle, but we can move and do whatever outside of battle. Okay, so but you're. What about the, um, if you don't have a full party of actual people, like some of them are NPCs, who directs them to do things? Presumably you can like direct your own character and you can't direct other player characters in the party, I'm guessing. Whoever, okay, interesting. Uh, you heard Hogwarts is killing themselves. Yeah, I, um, I really enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, when it came out, I was playing it. That was actually the first game I played on stream back in like March. You can change it to who was in charge of the NPC. Okay. Um, and I I completed, I I you know I, I got the the any percent right. I, I got to the end fight and finished that. Um, but there was a lot more to do, <laughs> and I'm tempted to go back. And there, there's a the whole thing of you can. You have different things you can see when you start in different houses. So there's a lot of stuff in there, and it's a, re a really beautiful game, right? So, but I have that from the Xbox. So, it the issue is, is that I'm not really set up to stream from that. It it was the first thing that I streamed, but it's not. It doesn't go to the quality <laughs> anymore that that I would like to have. Nerd alert. Oh no, you, you don't even know. Uh, how how deep... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, phrasing is problematic there. How much I am into um, Harry Potter lore? <laughs> so much. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a uh, from uh, one of the SBC guys? Oh yeah, SBC squad. It's a nice amount. All right. Are we there yet? Almost eleven more. Man, where's this water coming from? It's not coming from here. 
There must be some water coming from up here. From there, maybe? Like, we sealed off all the ice, right? Maybe some... No, there's not water up here. Hmm. That's fine. They're all in suits anyway, so they're not going to be bothered by walking through water. It's water inside the base that you don't want. What, what's your deal? Holding breath, soggy feet, hungry. But you can go places. Yeah, okay. He just like, he just like, you know, hanging out on that pole for a while. Um, so. Oh, I, I'm not on my gas overlay. There we go, okay. So the CO2 level is rising. <laughs> Literally rising. Um, why? How's the, the breathability? So the breathability is okay. Tell them to quit complaining. Well, they're not complaining yet. But you can see people holding people. You can see dupes. <laughs> Maybe they're people. You, you can see them holding their breath here in the, the layer of CO2. We could start pumping some out. Uh, what do you think would define you as a nerd? Uh, I don't know what you... <laughs> Like, what makes people nerds? Like, what does the word mean? Or what is the most, what, or is it a question of what is the nerdiest thing about me? <laughs> um, maybe those kind of questions. <laughs> uh, like Dr. Who, oh, hmm. Um, so, I used to, well, it's hard to say used to be. I love <laughs> anything they're deeply into. Um, all sorts of things. Star Trek. <laughs> um, my favorite, yeah, layers, exactly. Uh, my favorite, it's kind of weird because it, I think it still in a way holds up. It's just not, it doesn't have the production quality of of modern things, but uh, Babylon 5 was something that I watched when it was on air, and I have watched it several times since then. Um, but that is like... <laughs> oh yeah, d is great too. I haven't played like uh, actual like pen and paper D&D for a number of years, uh, but I played through 3.5 edition back in like 2004? I've never played uh, Magic. That was actually, it, it's kind of weird because they're nothing alike, right? But uh, when we were debating what we were gonna play back in the day, someone was like, oh, we should do Magic Gathering stuff. And I don't, I don't even really know anything about Magic other than there's cards. Um, and someone else was like, oh, we should do D&D. &D. And uh, yeah, so we ended up doing putting together a campaign and doing stuff. Why is there chlorine here? How'd that get there? <laughs> um, uh, you remember when Pokemon cards came out, it literally shook the world by <laughs> two degrees of Texas. Uh, I feel like I kind of missed the... Uh, um, I missed a lot of that stuff when I was younger with Pokemon because, um, like, I feel like, so I had, I had a, a the original Game Boy, but the, the game I got, it came with something, but the game that I got that I really was into was, um, uh, Legend of Zelda, what was it, uh, uh Link's Awakening? Right? But the other game that was on the original Game Boy was like a Pokemon game, wasn't it? That was a big thing back then. So I just kind of, I went one direction. <laughs> and I just never really got, well, why is this, uh, oh yeah, we have power issues. Okay, that, that might be enough CO2 for now. All my Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic cards gets, oh no. That, I mean, you say all of, that sounds like quite a lot. <laughs> that, that sounds really bad. Oh no. Sorry to hear that. Uh, 
spot. I mean, if you say so. <laughs> that, I, that doesn't sound good, but you know, it's uh, it was a long, it was long ago. Yeah. Now I've definitely had things that have been misplaced or lost or otherwise been absent back in the day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, hey, look, research complete. That's the thing we were waiting on. <laughs> Monuments research is complete. Uh, we can build monument base, monument mid section, monument top. Okay, so uh, is that under base? Yeah. I don't even know where that is. Is it, oh, uh, furniture, apparently? See the little thing highlighting? You had a uh, origami tiger card and magic that would have cost uh, a lot at one time. So where, okay, so monument base, monument top and my, monument midsection. Probably wanna start with the base. <laughs> so we need, we need seven and a half tons of steel and 2,500 kilograms of obsidian. Now for the base. And then the midsection needs 2,500 kilograms of ceramic 2,500 kilograms of plastic. So 2,500 kilograms is how much? Okay, I mean, we have, <laughs> we have a 541 kilograms just sitting right here. And we have, how many, how many kilograms is 24 tons? Is that like 24,000 kilograms? So I think we have enough plastic for that. But we're gonna need another five tons of steel. And then we need <laughs> 2,500 kilograms of glass, 2,500 kilograms of diamonds, and five tons of steel for that. So we need a total of 10, uh, 12 and a half tons of steel plus a bunch of obsidian. Now, <laughs> we got 45 minutes. Do we think we're gonna get that done in 45 minutes? I don't know. Uh, also, this is unreachable, so we've not been doing anything, so let's get that fixed. Um, so obsidian, I mean, there's obsidian in the world, right? That we could be mining up somewhere. Not a lot. Like here's obsidian. So that's a thousand kilograms. Is that is that a ton then? How many tons of obsidian do we need? For the base? Uh, 2,500 kilograms. Okay. So maybe that's not a lot. How much obsidian do we actually have? Obsidian. Uh, we have five tons available. Somewhere. Okay, if I click that and I click this. Okay. There's some obsidian there. And then there's some obsidian here. Okay. We might actually have... I'm confused. Three hundred. Yeah, thanks. And more over here. See, there's a thousand kilograms. It says we have five tons. And there's a thousand kilograms there, and we need. I mean, it looks like we have enough obsidian. We definitely don't have enough steel, right? <laughs> no, okay. Let's figure out what we need to do about steel. So probably a thing. So each job here uh, is producing 100 kilograms of steel. So 10 jobs gives us 1,000 kilograms. Well, I gotta, I gotta Google something. 
KG in ton. Okay, a metric ton. I thought it was a thousand. I just want to double check that. Yeah. Okay, it's a factor of a thousand. Cool. Okay, so, um. Seven thousand five hundred kilograms. So uh, seventy-five of these. H how much total steel do we need? <laughs> I said the number. I've already forgotten it. That's how that goes. Seven and a half, and uh, it's twelve and a half. Seventeen and a half. And 17 and a half. So, uh, 175. Oh, we can't put a number that big in here. Okay, forever. Forever. <laughs> uh, so the issue right now, though, is the coolant is uh, too hot. Um, we actually have a thermal aqua tuner over here that I don't know that we're actually using. Is the automation set up for it? Well, this is connected. What about the pipes? All right, I think this is set up so that, yeah, so it'll never trigger. I think what we might need to do is redo this, where we cool... Hmm. Let's take a look here. So the liquid coming in here is at uh, 82C, roughly. And so we have this set up because if the liquid is too hot and we try to use it as coolant for this, then um, things blow up, <laughs> things break. Uh, but otherwise we wanna send the liquid down here so that we're cooling the liquid and dumping the heat into the uh, surrounding space. Maybe we could just do a pass here first. disconnected this stuff, right? And instead I said, and instead of, um, hmm, hmm. So what I want to do, right, is I want to say if the, if the liquid is not too cold, have it run through the thermal aqua tuner to cool it, and then, when it's done, send it over here to this buffer and through this to warm it back up. Because when it passes through once, it's not going to cool it that much. It's just going to cool a little bit. Uh, but that'll cool it enough that it, we can safely put it through the uh, uh, the metal refinery as a coolant there. Uh, or I mean, I, we could just have a separate loop. Maybe that would, that would just be easier, right? So instead of having the coolant go through here and then try to also use it here, this could be simpler, right? If we, so first of all, we're not even using this whole thing. So instead, if we just disconnect this, and uh, let that go, there. 
We'll also get some more coolant in the, in the loop here, which is good. Make sure the pipe doesn't completely fill up. Like about. The, mm, it'll start backing up here. Okay, that should be fine disconnect that. Now, now it'll cycle. There we go. So now we have the cooling loop that we want. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to just build another thermal aqua tuner over here. And just have that go that way. And disconnect this, disconnect this, disconnect this. So we just have something that, this is gonna produce heat. This is gonna take the heat and dump it into the surrounding area. And these should like balance each other out. Um, we do need to have something here that's going to control. Uh, yeah, we need to have another uh, thermo sensor here somewhere. I guess there. Yeah, that seems fine. Good. And then we'll just get rid of that. Some more stuff that we'll have to do, uh, but this is the kind of the start of, the, of what we're going to need to be able to uh, actually have this working continuously. Uh, speaking of working continuously, refined carbon. We are going to need more. Now, how much refined carbon do we need? So we need 20 kilograms per batch. And we need 175 batches. Uh, if it was 10, that would be uh, 1,750, so twice that. Something like 30, almost 4,000 kilograms. We make, okay, so like 40 because we make 100 kilograms at a time. There we go. Uh, also, we need a bunch of ceramic. Uh, let's start with, I don't know, 100? Uh, no, 10 maybe? That's that's a ton of ceramic. How much ceramic did we actually need for the, uh, was it the midsection? Or the top? The midsection. 2,500. Uh, 2.5 tons. So it's 25. You're gonna catch a sand shoot? Good luck. <laughs> um, so the other thing we need to figure out how to do is to make, um, now we have to mine diamond, right? We, uh, glass. We need to be able to make glass. I think that's something we have to research still. So let's let's take a quick detour there. Um, and let's have already researched that. Drill cone, targeting, interplanetary launcher, diamond press. So we can make diamond. That might be good to do. Um, Milking, critter, okay, so I think we have whatever we need to make glass. So let's do the pressurized forging. So we could potentially make diamond if we can't find enough. Uh, meteor, liquid, jet suit dock. Jet suits are cool. <laughs> could do that. Okay, but I think that'll be good. 
Yeah. Make sure that we're doing a little research. Oh no, you didn't catch it. It, uh, what do you say? It is scuffed? <laughs> uh, oh. Thermal aqua tuner needs to be on top of a, a thing. Alright, there we go. Um. Right, glass. So, how do I make glass? I've never done this. I've seen it done. I think there is a, a thing for that. Is it is it under refinement? Is that a thing? Yeah, refinement. Uh, glass forge. So. Produces molten glass from raw sand. Do we have sand? Well, I'm sure we have some sand, right? Um, takes power. It has a liquid output pipe. It, um, oh, this is really good. This is a way to dump heat into our box. Yeah. This is, this is great. We're gonna do this uh, somewhere. This, this seems like a good place. There we go, and we'll just get a, another tile there. All right, oh, we need uh, power. Seems fine. Get some power going in there. Uh, my phone is telling me it's time to go to bed, but it's not. So the, the concern I have right now with this is that we have this thing where it's going to cycle liquid until the liquid is cool enough. Huh. What is... Okay. So let's take a look at this. So water's coming in. It's at uh, 82C. It's coming out at 71C, or 160. So, threshold is 155. So, that should cool the liquid enough that this switches uh, to enable the machinery. So, disabled by automation grid, disabled by automation grid. Okay, maybe not. At some point, It'll be cool enough. Okay, overheat damage is bad. Uh, that's because I made this out of iron ore. Deconstruct. Disable auto repair. I've, I've, I've made this mistake so many times because I'm just not paying attention to what the material the thing is built out of. Um, and it's not gonna survive if it's not made out of steel. Also, speaking of which, do we have steel? <laughs> uh, 130 kilograms. How much steel do we need to make one of these? Uh, 1,200. Okay. Well, in the meantime, this is going to cool things down so that we can actually make more steel. So there's that. So it's coming in at 81C, and uh, it's coming out at 67C. And we have a buffer before and after, and this is this is mostly working. The issue is going to be that if the liquid is too cold, and I think we have that here. So yeah, if um, we want to copy this setting over here, if the liquid's too cold, we want don't want to cool it. Because if you cool a liquid below its freezing point, it freezes. Uh, and solid things don't like to be inside of these in, in, uh, liquid pipes. And the pipes burst. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. All right, 
So eventually, a dupe is going to come over here and deconstruct this thermal aqua tuner. Um, and we'll make one out of steel. I guess we can tear apart this one since we're not even using it. And we'll use that steel to make a new one. And so we're, we're making steel. We're doing it. So, guess what I just did? <laughs> it's it's iron ore. I uh, yep. So if you if normally if you want to like copy something, you click on it, you hit B, and then you can go and you can build it somewhere else. But if you don't have the material to make it out of the material you had, you had selected before, uh, or the sorry the material that the thing you're copying was made out of, it selects a different thing. Uh, so we need 1,200. Uh, kilograms, 1.2 tons of steel, uh, and we don't have that until we disassemble the old one. And the game realizes we have steel. There we go. Now we can make a thermal aqua tuner out of ste steel. <laughs> sus? What's so sus? Did the pipe break? Is the water too hot? It's coming, it's it's going into the middle refinery. 67C. Okay, and it's getting heat damage. Okay. Okay, so this is set to high still. So let's take a look at the, uh, the info on the metal refinery. So the, the water coming in must be too hot. And so then the water that comes out is <laughs> uh, way too hot. 67. Oh. So the issue is that this sensor I mean, I think it'll be fine, but the issue is, is that the, the water here can be hot, and the water behind it is cooler, and so it trips the sensor, and then allows the hot water in. Now, overall, that's going to work itself out, because everything will cool down. Maybe. Or what we need to do is... Is there a way to switch where the fluid goes based on the signal? Like right now we have a liquid shut off. Hmm, meter valve, bridge, filter. Hmm, that's a problem. What can I do about that? Yeah, 
Okay, I see this is just gonna keep on breaking. 66, so 152 Fahrenheit. So that should disable, yeah, it is disabled by the automation grid. So I think, first of all, I'm gonna tear all this out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we'll do something else. Because this is not working. So in the meantime, while this is not operating, we are cooling the liquid. Yeah, so it's coming over here at 61.9, and it comes out here, and it's 48C. So there's that. Um, I think right now the issue is that the liquid that's in the metal refinery is too hot. Uh, and so... I don't know what you can do about that, because I don't know that there's a way to get the liquid out once it's in. Is the liquid in here losing temperature? So look, there's very hot polluted water, warm. <laughs> so there's 190 kilograms of polluted water at 130 C. Uh, Brainless says, I just migrated the old app <laughs> from 2.4 to 3.1 Rails 5 through 6 and got a large percentage of it to work. Well, there you go. Over here, I'm just breaking things. <laughs> um, a wild slugma appears in the chat. So, it seems like we have some really hot water. We're, we're in really hot water. <laughs> but I think this is going to fix itself. Because um, we're going to just repair the pipe a couple of times. And eventually, that hot water is going to come out of there. Right? Eventually, that's going to happen. Well, in the meantime, we're making steel. No, no, it's polluted water. What should I be using? Tell me what I should be using. I know that there are some uh, late game things you can use as cool that are like crude oil. Oh, that might be good. That's a good idea. Um, or petroleum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's think about that. And by think, let's um, and radiate it through the steam with radiant pipes. That will cool it. Oh yeah, that would probably be better than thermal aqua Hmm. Hmm. How much steel are we up to? Okay. We, we got a long ways to go. So, I don't know if you were around for it, but we did the research finally for the uh, the monument. <laughs> 
So just the monument base is uh, seven and a half tons of steel. Plus the other stuff. Five and five. That's great. Oh, you heard? Okay, cool. Overheat damaged. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I feel like I, uh, again, made the same mistake. <laughs> okay. So... If we got some petroleum... I'm just gonna ignore this for a while. Yeah, if, with ceramic. Yeah. I am making ceramic. So there is that. Uh, let's also disable... <laughs> uh, auto repair. Until this gets deconstructed. Um... So say we make a metal refinery. Let's just say we make a metal refinery. And then, um... What do we need? We just need some pipes, right? To, uh... Run petroleum through. And I think we're we're already piping petroleum into this. There's just not a lot to it, right? We just need some uh, radiant pipes. How much radiant pipe do we need <laughs> to be able to uh, cool the petroleum enough when it comes out of the metal refinery? Maybe I'll go with like 20. fill this full of petroleum and then we're done right oh bridge you really happy this is working <laughs> oh the, the the migration uh how about a bridge so we want it going this way yeah cancel Ooh. uh if we do this then we can Nope, that's still unreachable. Okay. There we go. Uh, but we'll have to leave it for another time. Won't put it with your PR. Okay. Are you sure? Just, just merge it all in. Well, in the meantime, this is kind of working. Until it fails again. Uh, what is the situation here with this liquid? Uh, it's fine, 94. So it's coming out at 111, and it's coming back at 97. So we'll pro I'm not. I'm not sure if the thermal aqua tuner is going to be able to keep up. We'll probably start exploding again. <laughs> I'm sure flies. <laughs> oh, there we go. He damaged. Uh, with the crude plus radiant, will be free cooling plus steam heating. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be petroleum because we have that like right here anyway for the plastic. 
So I'll just be able to dump some into the, uh, the loop. Now I guess if this fails, we get a bunch of uh, sour gas in our uh, in our um, uh, steam box, industrial brick. All right, that's it, right? Except for the part where we need a uh, metal refinery. Which I did make out of ceramic because I just copied it. Um, the other thing we could do. That would mean the box of super hot shouldn't happen. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, refining. Refinement. There we go. Glass forge. Please make it out of ceramic. Hey, look, I have ceramic. Alright, make it. We also need glass. Which is gonna make it even hotter. It's great. We'll finally actually have these steam turbines working all the time. Hmm. Hey, look at that. We have natural gas in here. Building it. Camille is deciding that now nah, she'd rather get some food. So we're up to uh, 1400 kilograms of steel. Um, it's interesting, it says we have like five tons of obsidian, but when I look at the um, monument base, it says missing resources. Now the uh, the machine itself has a buffer, right? So we can pretty much almost completely fill this. Oh yeah, this will work really well, right? Because we're we don't have anything queued. So this will fill full of petroleum, and this pipe will be full. But this bit of pipe won't fill because it won't flow this way. So we'll have a little bit of a buffer to leave room for liquid to flow around. Don't fill it. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying is that it shouldn't fill completely because there should be a gap here. Well, it's mostly full, so let's let's leave it there. Okay, so we have that much of a gap. We 
Should be fine. Okay, and we have power, so uh, let's just make iron to steel forever. And uh, we're going to destroy this. Melt risk, it says. What does that mean? This pipe is in danger of melting at the current temperature. Did we, um. Maybe this is not a good place for this. <laughs> let's, uh, let's change where we, where we place this. Deconstruct. Let's try that again. It looks like the uh, glass forge is connecting up to a pipe that's passing by. Alright, now we have coolant coming out. So it's coming out at 250 degrees Celsius. It's looping around and it's looping around and by here it's 126. Now what was the temperature of it coming in? Uh, 117. Okay. That that seems okay. The heat overlay is not gonna tell us anything because it's all just red. But uh this steam here is 121, 120, 19, 18. Okay. And we're done with the thermal aqua tuner. We don't need that either. We don't need that sensor. That's great. Oh, we got some sticker bombs <laughs> in there. That's nice. Uh, the pollutant water, we can just uh, empty. Should be fine. Uh, you know what we should have? <laughs> Given the number of things that are dupe operated in here, we should have a, uh, a transit, uh, uh, a, what should we call it? Transit tube over here. Somehow, some way. Oh, it's flooded. This keeps happening. I don't like it. Uh, let's deconstruct that tile. And let's do some mopping. I guess I could put some uh, mesh tile here.
Uh, I'll leave. Oops. I'll leave this tile empty. I might have the uh, trans tube go through it. Maybe we can route it down and maybe through here. I'll think about that later. Probably not something I want to start right now when we have just a few minutes before we need to wrap up. Alright, so before I do that though, I don't want to forget next time. We do need to make glass. So let's get glass forge out of ceramic. Uh, make sure it's not placed over any pipes. Get the wire run to it. Um, plumbing wise. We need a liquid vent, I think is how this is supposed to work. Out of steel. And it just needs to dump somewhere. Maybe like, just have it dump out right there. That'd be fine, right? And then, um, ceramic pipe. I don't know. Uh, how is our coolant situation here? So again, it's coming out um, at 257, and by the time it makes it over here, 128. So this stuff is operating, it's starting to operate more, and I think we're Oh, yep, we're, we're out of ceramic. Uh, let's plan on making more ceramic. Good thing we have lots of coal. Alright, so we're waiting for those pipes to get made. And uh, I guess we make molten glass. It pours out of the liquid vent down onto the ground and solidifies. I think that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, do we have time to find out today? Maybe. Depends on how long it takes to get the ceramic made. That's another thing I guess we could look at in terms of trying to like make all these materials is maybe uh, uh, set up some conveyors to bring things over. So what are we at in terms of steel? How much do we need for the base? Was the base 5 or 7.5? The base was 7.5. <laughs> Pull an eye all night, all night and you have plenty of time. So the problem with doing something like that is that it just completely destroys my sleep schedule. And then come Monday morning, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. Been there, done that. Learned my lesson, eventually. Alright. Okay. So I think... With this uh, pretty cool music, forget. We're gonna, I'm gonna drop a save right here. I'm gonna stop for now.